Today, myself and my colleagues would like to talk to you about our paper called Cervical Lymph Nodes and Ovarian Teratomas as Germinal Centres in NMDA Receptor Antibody Encephalitis. By way of a little bit of background, my group is fundamentally interested in the immunology underlying neurological diseases. And we selected patients with NMDA receptor antibody encephalitis as a paradigm of a single antigen driven neurological disease. And we were advancing and expanding on our initial observations published in 2018. And here we sampled widely. We sampled from blood, both serum and peripheral blood lymphocytes, from cerebrospinal fluid, from lymph nodes, and from ovarian teratomas. Key organs of immunological interest in patients with this neurological disease. And importantly, we studied both cells and the antibodies. We focused specifically on the cervical lymph nodes because these have been shown to drain central nervous system meningeal lymphatics and seemed like a likely source for a ongoing immunization in our patients. And so overall, we aim to create a human model of how an autoimmunization against a single antigen, the NR1 subunit of the NMDA receptor, operates in patients both with and without ovarian teratomas. And throughout this process, we were keen to maintain correlations with clinical status and the clinical features of our patients. And to summarize in more detail what we did, I'm going to hand over to my co-authors and colleagues, Adam Aldawani, who pioneered the cervical lymph node aspiration concept, Adam Handel, who has modeled and analyzed much of the data, and Ruby Harrison, who has performed many of the antibody assays. Uh, firstly, in figure one, we use live cell-based assay to detect the presence of NR1, IgM and IgA. These antibodies co-localized with surface expressed NR1 and there was appropriate loss of binding when subclasses were depleted. Now that we had confirmation that these subclasses were present, the level of NR1, IgA and IgM was tested across longitudinal serum and CSF from NMDA patients, healthy controls and disease controls. Patients had a statistically significant higher level of NR1, IgA and IgM in serum. Within these patients, those with ovarian teratomas also had a statistically significant higher level of NR1 IgA. This was then explored longitudinally. Strikingly, CSF NR1 IgA was associated with the presence of an ovarian teratoma when sampled within 10 days of symptom onset. And CSF NR1 IgM had the same association within 30 days. The later samples were obtained, the less association was present. An explanation for this is that the presence of an ovarian teratoma promoted class switch recombination. Thus, the ratio of NR1 IgA to IgM was calculated, and NR1 IgA predominated in patients with ovarian teratomas, but this diminished after resection of that teratoma. In patients without an ovarian teratoma, NR1 IgM dominated despite clinical remission. So here in figure two, we explore the lymphoid follicular structures in more detail. So first of all, we look to see where the different immunoglobulins are produced. So we can see here that NMDA receptor antibodies on an IgA backbone um, are mostly produced within the teratoma itself. We can then zoom in using multiplexed immunofluorescence imaging, and we can see that there are several lymphoid follicular structures here. So for example, you can see one expressing high levels of NR1 antigen, proximate to various um, other components of the immune system, such as T cells, B cells, BCR6 positive cells. And within those structures, when you zoom in further, you can see that those B cells are undergoing somatic hypermutation and likely to undergo class switching. Around those structures are antigen presenting cells such as follicular dendritic cells um, and T follicular helper cells as well. And those are closely surrounded by um, lymphatic structures. In figure three, uh, we look further at these cells using single cell sequencing technologies. When we looked at IgA B cell receptor sequences, we found that these were far more mutated than were the IgG uh, versions of the B cell receptor. And moreover, when we looked within the ovarian teratomas, we were able to tell that these were more clonally expanded than within blood. We went on to look at the cluster, which was enriched within teratoma tissues, and we found that that was enriched for IgA sequences, as one would expect, and also expressed heat shock proteins. 
So we'd seen in the teratoma that this was in many ways functioning like a germinal center. However, only about a third of patients have an ovarian teratoma. So we wanted to understand processes in traditional lymphoid organs, i.e. lymph nodes, in patients both who'd had an ovarian teratoma and patients who had not. And we used a clinically familiar approach of ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration. This allowed us to take paired lymph node and peripheral blood samples and we then studied those using flow cytometry and also cell culture, similarly to previous experience. And what we found was that in some patients, particularly those who had had relapsing illness or those who'd had a yet to be fully treated teratoma, that in those patients in culture, they made NR1 antibody at quite a high frequency, higher than peripheral blood in all cases. And what we also saw was that patients who'd had a fully treated teratoma did not make the antibody from their lymph node sample. Additionally, the positive lymph node patients correlated with a higher serum titer and also higher local levels of the germinal center marker CXL13. So overall, this provided in patients evidence of NR1 specific autoantibody production at cervical lymph node. Moreover, we see, this as, we see this as a method for sampling this unique emerging neuroimmune interface in other diseases. So in summary, we've used multiple techniques and several approaches using a unique set of human biosamples to both identify the anatomical and functional evidence of germinal center activity in patients with tertiary lymphoid organs, the ovarian teratoma, and more classical secondary lymphoid organs, the cervical lymph nodes, which have a direct importance to the central nervous system immunology.